Alpha blockers, also known as alpha blockers or alpha adrenoreceptor antagonists, are a class of pharmacological agents that act as antagonists on alpha adrenergic receptors, alpha adrenoceptors. Historically, alpha blockers were used as a tool for pharmacologic research to develop a greater understanding of the autonomic nervous system. Using alpha blockers, scientists began characterizing arterial blood pressure and central vasomotor control in the autonomic nervous system. Today, they can be used as clinical treatments for a limited number of diseases, although alpha blockers can only treat a small range of diseases, some of them have clinical uses, such as having the ability to treat hypertension, Raynaud's disease, erectile dysfunction, etc. Generally speaking, all of these treatments function by binding an alpha blocker to alpha receptors in the arteries and smooth muscle. Ultimately, this relaxes the smooth muscle or blood vessels, which increases fluid flow in these entities. Mechanism of action Alpha blockers work by blocking the effect of nerves in the sympathetic nervous system. This is done by binding to the alpha receptors in smooth muscle or blood vessels. Alpha blockers can bind both reversibly and irreversibly. There are several alpha receptors throughout the body where these drugs can bind. Specifically, alpha-1 receptors can be found in most vascular smooth muscle, the pupillary dilator muscle, the heart, the prostate, and pillomotor smooth muscle. On the other hand, alpha-2 receptors can be found in platelets, cholinergic nerve terminals, some vascular smooth muscle, postsynaptic CNS neurons, and fat cells. The structure of alpha receptors is a classic G-protein coupled receptors, GPCRs, consisting of seven transmembrane domains, which form three intracellular loops and three extracellular loops. These receptors couple to heterotrimeric G-proteins composed of alpha, beta, and gamma subunits. Although both of the alpha receptors are GPCRs, there are large differences in their mechanism of action. Specifically, alpha-1 receptors are characterized as GQ-GPCRs, signaling through phospholipase C to increase IP3 and DAG, thus increasing the release of calcium. Meanwhile, alpha-2 receptors are labeled as GGPCRs, which signal through adenylyl cyclase to decrease CAMP. Because the alpha-1 and alpha-2 receptors have different mechanisms of action, their antagonists also have different effects. Alpha-1 blockers can inhibit the release of IP3 and DAG to decrease calcium release, thus, decreasing overall signaling. On the other hand, alpha-2 blockers prevent the reduction of CAMP, thus leading to an increase in overall signaling. Classification Alpha-1 blockers act on alpha-1 adrenoceptors Alpha-2 blockers act on alpha-2 adrenoceptors When the term alpha blocker is used without further qualification, it can refer to an alpha-1 blocker, an alpha-2 blocker, a non-selective blocker, both alpha-1 and alpha-2 activity, or an alpha blocker with some beta activity. However, the most common type of alpha blocker is usually an alpha-1 blocker. Non-selective alpha adrenergic receptor antagonists include phenoxybenzamine, phentolamine, tilazoline, trazodone. Selective alpha-1 adrenergic receptor antagonists include alfuzosin. Doxazosin, prazosin, inverse agonist, tamsulosin, terazosin, psilocin. Selective alpha-2 adrenergic receptor antagonists include adapamazole, idazoxin, mirtazapine. Yahimbine. Finally, the agents carvedilol and labetalol are both alpha and beta blockers. Below are some of the most common drugs used in the clinic. Medical uses While there are limited clinical alpha blocker uses, in which most alpha blockers are used for hypertension or benign prostatic hyperplasia, alpha blockers can be used to treat a few other diseases, such as Raynaud's disease, congestive heart failure, CHF, pheochromocytoma, and erectile dysfunction. Furthermore, alpha blockers can occasionally be used to treat anxiety and panic disorders, such as post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, induced nightmares. 
Studies have also had great medical interest in testing alpha blockers, specifically alpha-2 blockers, to treat type 2 diabetes and psychiatric depression. Hypertension Hypertension is due to an increase in vascular resistance and vasoconstriction. Using alpha-1 selective antagonists, such as prazosin, has been efficacious in treating mild to moderate hypertension. This is because they can decrease vascular resistance and decrease pressure. However, while these drugs are generally well tolerated, they have the potential to produce side effects such as orthostatic hypotension and dizziness. Another treatment for hypertension is using drugs that have both alpha-1 blocking activity, as well as non-selective beta activity, such as labetalol or carvedilol. In low doses, labetalol and carvedilol can decrease the peripheral resistance and block the effects of isoprenaline to reduce hypertensive symptoms. Pheochromocytoma Pheochromocytoma is a disease in which a catecholamine-secreting tumor develops. Specifically, norepinephrine and epinephrine are secreted by these tumors, either continuously or intermittently. The excess release of these catecholamines increases central nervous system stimulation, thus causing blood vessels to increase in vascular resistance, and ultimately giving rise to hypertension. In addition, patients with these rare tumors are often subject to headaches, heart palpitations, and increased sweating. Phenoxybenzamine, a non-selective alpha-1 and alpha-2 blocker, has been used to treat pheochromocytoma. This drug blocks the activity of epinephrine and norepinephrine by antagonizing the alpha receptors, thus decreasing vascular resistance, increasing vasodilation, and decreasing blood pressure overall. Congestive heart failure Blockers that have both the ability to block both alpha and beta receptors, such as carvedilol, bucindolol, and labetalol, have the ability to mitigate the symptoms in congestive heart failure. By binding to both the alpha and beta receptors, these drugs can decrease the cardiac output and stimulate the dilation of blood vessels to promote a reduction in blood pressure. Erectile dysfunction Yahimbine, an alpha-2 blocker derived from the bark of the Posnestalia yahimbe tree, has been tested to increase libido and treat erectile dysfunction. The proposed mechanism for yahimbine is stimulation of the adrenergic receptors that are associated with penile erection and libido. By doing so, they can alter the blood flow in the penis to aid in achieving an erection. However, some side effects can occur, such as palpitation, tremor, elevated blood pressure, and anxiety. Phentolamine, a non-selective alpha blocker, has also been tested to treat erectile dysfunction. By reducing vasoconstriction in the penis, there appears to be increased blood flow that aids in penile erection. Side effects associated with phentolamine include headache, flushing, and nasal congestion. Benign prostatic hyperplasia in benign prostatic hyperplasia BPH, men experience urinary obstruction and are unable to urinate, thus leading to urinary retention. Alpha-1 specific blockers have been used to relax the smooth muscle in the bladder and enlarged prostate. Prazosin, doxazosin, and terazosin have been particularly useful for patients with BPH, especially in patients with hypertension. In such patients, these drugs can treat both conditions at the same time. In patients without hypertension, tamsulosin can be used, as it has the ability to relax the bladder and prostate smooth muscle without causing major changes in blood pressure. Reno's disease Both alpha-1 blockers and alpha-2 blockers have been examined to treat Reno. S disease. Although alpha-1 blockers, such as prazosin, have appeared to give slight improvement for the sclerotic symptoms of Reno. S disease, there are many side effects that occur while taking this drug. Conversely, alpha-2 blockers, such as yahimbine, appear to provide significant improvement of the sclerotic symptoms in Reno's disease without excessive side effects. Post-traumatic stress disorder. Patients with post-traumatic stress disorder PTSD, have often continued to be symptomatic despite being treated with PTSD-specific drugs. In addition, PTSD patients often have debilitating nightmares that continue, despite their treatments. 
High doses of the alpha-1 blocker, prazosin, have been efficacious in treating patients with PTSD-induced nightmares due to its ability to block the effects of norepinephrine. Adverse effects of prazosin to treat PTSD nightmares include dizziness, first-dose effect, a sudden loss of consciousness, weakness, nausea, and fatigue. Adverse effects Although alpha blockers have the ability to reduce some disease pathology, there are some side effects that come with these alpha blockers. However, because there are several structural compositions that make each alpha blocker different, the side effects are different for each drug. Side effects that arise when taking alpha blockers can include the first dose effect, cardiovascular side effects, genitourinary side effects, as well as other side effects. First dose effect one of the most common side effects with alpha blockers is the first dose effect. This is a phenomenon in which patients with hypertension take an alpha blocker for the first time, and suddenly experience an intense decrease in blood pressure. Ultimately, this gives rise to orthostatic hypotension, dizziness, and a sudden loss of consciousness due to the drastic drop in blood pressure. Alpha blockers that possess these side effects include prazosin, doxazosin, and terazosin. Cardiovascular side effects There are some alpha blockers that can give rise to changes in the cardiovascular system, such as the induction of reflex tachycardia, orthostatic hypotension, or heart palpitations via alterations of the QT interval. Alpha blockers that may have these side effects include yahimbine, phenoxybenzamine, and phentolamine. Genitourinary side effects when alpha blockers are used to treat BPH, it causes vasodilation of blood vessels on the bladder and the prostate, thus increasing urination in general. However, these alpha blockers can produce the exact opposite side effect, in which edema, or abnormal fluid retention, occurs. In addition, due to the relaxation of the prostate smooth muscle, another side effect that arises in men being treated for BPH is impotence, as well as the inability to ejaculate. However, if any ejaculation activity does occur, oftentimes, it results in a phenomenon called retrograde ejaculation, in which semen flows into the urinary bladder instead of exiting through the urethra. Drugs that may produce such side effects include prazosin, terazosin, tamsulosin, and doxazosin. Other side effects Finally, there are other general side effects that can be caused by most alpha blockers, however, more frequently in alpha-1 blockers. Such side effects include dizziness, drowsiness, weakness, fatigue, psychiatric depression, and dry mouth. Contraindications There is only one compelling indication for alpha blockers, which is for benign prostatic hyperplasia. Patients who need alpha blockers for BPH, but have a history of hypotension or postural heart failure, should use these drugs with caution, as it may result in an even greater decrease in blood pressure or make heart failure even worse. The most compelling contraindication is urinary incontinence and overall fluid retention. To combat such fluid retention, patients can take a diuretic in combination with the alpha blocker. In the absence of compelling indications or contraindications, patients should take alpha blockers as a step 4 therapy to reduce blood pressure, but only if the use of ACE inhibitors, angiotensin II receptor blockers, calcium channel blockers, or thazide diuretics, in full dose or in combinations, have not been efficacious. Drug interactions as with any drug, there are drug interactions that can occur with alpha blockers. For instance, alpha blockers that are used for the reduction of blood pressure, such as phenoxybenzamine or phentolamine can have synergy with other drugs that affect smooth muscle, blood vessels, or drugs used for erectile dysfunction, i.e. sildenafil, tamsulosin, etc. This stimulates exaggerated hypotension. Alternative alpha blockers, such as prazosin, tamsulosin, doxazosin, or terazosin, can have adverse interactions with beta blockers, erectile dysfunction drugs, anxiolytics, and antihistamines. Again, these interactions can cause dangerous hypotension. Furthermore, in rare cases, drug interactions can cause irregular, rapid heartbeats or an increased blood pressure. Uhimbine can interact with stimulants, hypertension drugs, naloxone, and clonidine. 
Interactions with such drugs can cause either an unintended increase in blood pressure or potentiate an increase in blood pressure. Finally, in drugs with both alpha and beta blocking properties, such as carvedilol and labetalol, interactions with other alpha or beta blockers can exaggerate a decrease in blood pressure. Conversely, there are also drug interactions with carvedilol or labetalol in which blood pressure is increased unintentionally, such as with cough and cold medications. Finally, there may also be some alpha-beta blocker drug interactions that can worsen previous heart failure. See also Beta blocker Adrenergic antagonist References <laughs>